Oh, the dissatisfied colonel who's willing to, for 10 million bucks in a Swiss bank account to pop, pop Saddam. And just the idea that we're doing that presumably creates even more paranoia in the, in the inner circle, which I guess serves our purposes. Let's shift to another topic. The global economy, it seems shaky in Asia, faltering in Europe, but things are still booming here in the U.S., Juan. Uh, what does this presage? Are we going to have, or do we need to start worrying about global economic problems? Well, of course we do, because it impacts on certain industries. The, the, the reason that we have to worry about this is the trade problem, that if you can't have trade with Asia in the way that we used to, well, then certain industries go way down. If you think about agriculture, for example, if you think about some of the exports that we have that are just suffering, the, especially blue-collar exports in this country, they're, they're, in, they're in terrific trouble. The good news is that if you're in high-tech in industries, if you're either investing in them or you're employed by them, boom times. And that's why the stock market continues to go up, but it hides. I think it really covers over some of the basic problems in our economy, especially for low-level workers. Should we fear a resurgence of protectionism, Dave? Always. Yeah. There, there are always strong elements in both parties that are advocating a retrenchment. Yeah, yeah fast-track trade authority was defeated. Um, uh, the Republicans, I mean, brought it up in order to uh, to embarrass the, the 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 Democrats at election time and the administration, but it still failed, and they couldn't deliver the votes to to pass it. So there there's rising protectionism in the Republican Party too. Okay, now a good economy helped Bill Clinton at the polls. What did the elections mean? Very quickly, Juan. I think the elections meant that the American people didn't want him impeached and felt that the Republicans had sort of a, a vendetta going and they weren't pleased with it. Was impeachment the central issue, David? There's very little evidence for that. I'm sure it played in the backs of people's minds and I think it probably helped uh, establish an image of the Republican Party as unfeeling, uh, which obviously cost them a couple of seats. But I don't think this was largely a status quo election. Yeah, I don't think the, Re the Republicans did anything this year, and at the very last minute, they didn't even pass a budget. At the very last minute, Clinton managed to f to use just a uh, 1.1 uh, billion dollars out of I forget 600 billion dollars over five years for, in education spending to make that the sim the symbol of the election, and he won again. He outfoxed them. But you know, I mean, goodness gracious, How, I mean, status quo outfoxed. The fact is that Newt Gingrich is gone, who was seen as the head of the Republican revolution. I mean, that's not status quo. That's a revolutionary change, it seems to me. Speaking of revolutionary change, baseball. The history books were rewritten, the record books this year. Sammy Sosa, Mark McGuire, one bit of good news. This is a great sports year, Juan. A fabulous sports year from John Elway and the Broncos finally doing something to Michael Jordan, winning that fabulous uh, NBA championship again to Sammy Sosa and Mark McGuire, which, you know, it's funny, if you look back now at the end of the year and all the replays, it still gives me tingles to imagine that in my lifetime somebody really hit more than 60 home runs, 61, and beat Babe Ruth's record. You know, more, one of the interesting things, too, is that when these people are competing, they don't punch each other out. Yeah, this is one of, this is the only, <laughs> this is the only realm I can think of where, where uh, you know, you don't want your enemy, uh, you don't want only to beat your enemy, but, you, you know, you want him to die the, the way it is in politics. <laughs> it was great. S Sosa and McGuire conducted this thing like old-fashioned word gentlemen. David, is there an object lesson here? The Yankees always win. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. <laughs> the Yankees always win, but basketball fans may be the big losers. It, it's always amazing when the sports scene looks bright, at least one major sport decides to go out and commit suicide. I just can't believe it. It seems to me to be such awful greed. I mean, this is a case where there's just so much money available. Pro basketball is the most popular sport around and somehow the players are dissatisfied with making kazillions and the owners say they're dissatisfied with making I don't know what's more than kazillions but kazillions plus so it, they're killing each other. Well with that mathematical analysis we'll have to wrap it up. The most bizarre moment of that though was when they were talking about doing a fundraiser a charity benefit for people in a sport where the minimum salary is two hundred seventy thousand dollars. That's it for this panel but stay with us we'll be back with some enduring images of 1998 after this break. Well, gossip in January and swiftly became the anchor for every newspaper's front page from then on. From the first obscure photos of Monica to the ever-present video of Monica in hats, Monica in restaurants, Von Monica in various poses, it's been a year to remember, even if you just want to forget. We begin with a glance at the woman who made it all possible, not Linda Tripp or Lucy Ann Goldberg, but Paula Jones. I have the proof, and I want the opportunity to be heard. 
I don't have any specific recollections of what the issues were. Mr. President, how did it go? How did it go? Our job is to gather facts and to evaluate those facts and to get at the truth. I did not have sexual relations with that woman, Miss Lewinsky.